distinguished heads of state and government, honorable ministers and excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely honored to join you in this session and important, uh, important emergency summit. Middle East is a significant geographical region that requires international communities collective responsibility and comprehensive action. Proliferation of weapons of mass destruction is the one of the risks that to our contemporary world and we cannot overcome this menace unless all member states, including nuclear ones, adopt the just principle approach in their respective policies. In this context, I would like to revise and regard the challenging security situation in the Middle East with particular emphasis on the Iran nuclear program and also the concerns of regional countries about the possible course of action that might be taken against. Establishing a credible and convincing global non-proliferation regime would not be achievable while ignoring the facto existence of nuclear weapons of certain countries at the heart of the most critical and tender region. Global problems cannot be solved unilaterally, bilaterally, or small like-minded nations in the circle. Therefore, it's important today that we need to adopt a multilateral approach to this emergency session. Now, I want to get the views from the delegates of each country according to the order that I will declare. However, each state has a four at most five minutes due to the time construction. Okay, I will leave the ground, first of all, to USA, and secondly, Israel, thirdly, Iran, as fourth, Iraq, and the fifth one is Turkey, and the sixth one is Syria, um, then Saudi Arabia, Egypt, European Union, Russian Federation, and lastly to Jordan. Thank you. Thank you for your speech, Honorable Delegant. Uh, Honorable Secretary General and Honorable Delegates. <coughs> We meet today at a moment of great consequence in the long and complicated history of international concerns about Iran and its nuclear ambitions. Today, as Honorable Secretary General have just indicated, we have an urgent problem regarding Iran's nuclear program. This issue is not just a problem to solve, but is a danger for all of us, for our world, and for our future as well. We have taken some sanctions towards Iran. It's a set of measures that we are determined to implement fully and aggressively. It's a set of measures that is already producing tangible results. And it's a set of measures that reinforces our collective resolve to hold Iran to its international obligations. <coughs> a great deal is at stake. A nuclear-armed Iran would severely threaten the security and stability of a part of the world crucial to our interests and to the health of the global economy. It would seriously undermine the credibility <coughs> of the United Nations and other international institutions and seriously weaken the nuclear non-proliferation regime at precisely the moment when we are seeking to strengthen it. In the face of those challenges, American policy is straightforward. We must prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. We must counter its destabilizing actions in the region and beyond. We must continue to do all we can do to advance our broader interest in the democracy, human rights, peace and economic development across the Middle East. President Obama has made clear repeated that we will stand up for those rights that should be universal to all human <coughs> beings and stand with those brave Iranians who seek only to express themselves freely and peacefully. The simple truth is that a government that does not respect the rights of its own people will find it increasingly difficult to win the respect that it professes to seek in the international community. We have emphasized from the start that what is issue between Iran and the rest of the world is not its right to a peaceful nuclear program but rather it's the case long failure to live up, live up to the responsibilities that will come with that right. If Iran is sincere, it should not be hard to show the rest of the international community that its nuclear program is aimed at exclusively peaceful purposes. Facts are stubborn things, however, and it's a telling fact that Iran, along all signatories of the NPT, continues to fail year after year to convince the IAEA and the United Nations of its peaceful nuclear intentions. Nearly two years ago, President Obama began an unprecedented effort at engagement with Iran. We did so without illusions about whom we were dealing with or the scope of our differences over the past 30 years. 
We sought to create early opportunities for Iran to pursue a different path and to build confidence in its intentions. This was both a serious demonstration of our good faith and also an investment in partnership with a growing coalition of countries profoundly concerned about Iran's nuclear ambitions. Let me conclude by emphasizing simple but important realities. Sanctions and pressures are not an, in, uh, are not an end in themselves. They are a complement, not a substitute for the diplomatic solution to which we and our partners are still firmly committed. There is still time for diplomacy if Iran is prepared to engage in serious discussions. There is still room for a renewed effort to break down mistrust and begin a careful faith process of building confidence between Iran and the international community. There is still an opportunity for an outcome which ensures both Iran's rights and the fulfillment of its responsibilities. To conclude, I appreciate to emphasize Obama's words for, our, for all of us to frame our international policy. Suppressing ideas never succeeds in making them go away. This issue must be taken into account as a global issue rather than a basic regional problem concerning human rights. If the Iranian government seeks the respect of the international community, it must respect those rights and the heed the will of its own people. It, it must govern through consent, not coercion. Thank you. Thank you, too. Okay, now it's your turn, Israel. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates. Thanks to your former president, Mr. Eisenhower's speech, Atoms for Peace, the usage of atomic energy became the main issue of the world politics. Although most of the countries prefer to use atomic energy for peaceful purposes, some of them choose to use <coughs> atomic energy for military purposes. Especially, Iran is actively cursing a nuclear weapons capability as a part of efforts to impose its hegemony in the region and beyond. To supplement its activity in this context, Tehran employs subversion, support for terrorism, and the dissemination of <coughs> ideology, which totally rejects human rights and other freedoms. At the same time, Tehran signing will manipulate the diplomatic area in order to further its strategic goal. Especially, Tehran's negative attitudes towards IA and other countries who have concern about Iran's nuclear ambitions. Tehran negative attitudes seen obviously in the Geneva Conference and Iranian government behave unwillingly to cooperate the international community. The State of Israel has to, character, has to characterize Iran's nuclear ambitions as an existential threat to our country. Extreme Islamist movements that hid by Tehran direct the states that their desires to destroy the State of Israel However, it is not only our concern, it should be considered by the international community as a whole. Following the various efforts, on 2010 June, the international community finally secured the adoption of the new Security Council Resolution 1929. On behalf of my country, we appreciate, we appreciate that United Nations Security Council Resolution 1929 represents a significant upgrade over previous resolution. It includes for the first time a reference to the energy sector, strong sanction against the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, restriction on the banking ties with the Iran, strength sanction in transportation and shipping sector, the establishment of a panel of the experts to the sanction committee, expansion of the arms embargo, and additional restriction in the missile chauffeur. The IA report in the September 2010 on the Iranian nuclear crisis highlights the absence of cooperation by Tehran with the agency. According to the report, Iran has adopted minimalistic approach in implementing its safeguard agreements with the IAEA. It places opticals and restriction in the way of routine inspection activity conducted by the agency and completely refuses to cooperate with the IAEA's investigation into nuclear program military dimension and attitude which has effectively blocked progress since 2008. The rise in international pr pressure has converged with the deepening domestic crisis in Iran, which is facing a worsening economic downturn particularly because of sanctions and declining oil revenues. It should be noted that West, led by the USA, has made it clear that sanctions are intended to break in Iran back to the negotiation table and have expressed willingness to resume talks. The State of Israel called all states urgently to extend the section on Iran and the international community's highest priority must be to prevent this threat from materializing. Although these sanctions are applied on Iran, if Tehran continues nuclear ambitions, there should be more concrete steps in order to take actions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
You're wrong. Thank you. In the name of God, of mercy, compassion, peace, freedom and justice. Honorable Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished heads of delegation, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I praise the merciful, all-knowing and almighty God for blessing me with an opportunity to address this assembly on behalf of the great nation of Iran in order to clarify the approach and initiative of the Islamic Republic of Iran on the nuclear issue. Nuclear energy is clean and cheap and a heavenly gift which is amongst the most suitable alternatives to cut the pollution emanating from fossil fuels. The Non-Proliferation Treaty allows all member states to use nuclear energy without limits and the International Atomic Energy Agency is mandated to provide member states with technical and legal, legal support. The nuclear bomb is the worst inhumane we weapon and which must be totally be eliminated. The MPT prohibits its development and stockpiling and calls for nuclear disarmament. Nonetheless, note what some of the permanent members of the Security Council and nuclear bomb holders have done. They have equated nuclear energy with the nuclear bomb and have distanced this energy from the reach of most of nations by establishing monopolies and pressuring the IAEA, while at the same time they have continued to maintain, expand and upgrade their own nuclear arsenals. This has entailed the following. Not only the nuclear disarmament has not been realized, but also nuclear bombs have been proliferated in some regions including by the occupying and intimidating Zionist regime. I would like here to propose that the year 2011 be proclaimed the year of nuclear disarmament and nuclear energy for all, nuclear weapons for none. However, nuclear weapons and their proliferation and attempts to impose an apartheid regime on access to peaceful nuclear energy are two major threats, challenging international tranquility and peace. Allow me, as the head of delegation of the Islamic Republic of Iran, to outline the other main elements of my country's initiative regarding the nuclear issue. You are all aware that Iran is a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency and has always observed its rules and regulations and has had the most extensive cooperation with this agency in all areas. All our nuclear activities have been completely peaceful and transparent. Iran does not discuss its four granted nuclear, energy, nuclear rights in any way. The Islamic Republic of Iran reiterates its previously and repeatedly declared position that, in accordance with our religious principles, pursuit of nuclear weapons is haram, prohibited. Iran welcomes dialogue with the West on equal basis and mutual respect. The aim in this regard should be interaction and cooperation, not animosity with Iran and challenging Iranians' legal rights. The discriminatory approaches regarding the MPT that focuses on the obligations of state parties and disregards their rights under the treaty should be discontinued. <coughs> Therefore, all threats and pressures on Iran should be avoided completely. In addition, in order to have the same transparent common basis in our dialogue, we would like to the West to clarify its stance regarding Israeli's nuclear weapons. It is not necessary to mention that the Zionist regime of Israel is not a member of the MPT. Initiation and continuation of negotiations with other countries will be carried out in the context of Iran's interaction with the agency on equal basis and mutual respect. And about the glorious Iran, the Tehran Declaration was a hugely constructive step in confidence building efforts which was made possible through the admirable goodwill by the governments of Brazil and Turkey along with the sincere cooperation of the Iranian government. Although the declaration received inappropriate reaction by some and was followed by, by an unlawful resolution, it is still valid. Technically, the fuel cycle of the Islamic Republic of Iran is not different from that of other countries that have peaceful nuclear technology. The Islamic Republic of Iran believes that it is necessary to revitalize the MPT and create an ad hoc committee so that it can combat nuclear weapons and abolish the apartheid in peaceful nuclear technology. In keeping with Iran's inalienable right to have access to a nuclear fuel cycle, 
continued interaction and technical and legal cooperation with the IAEA will be the centerpiece of our nuclear policy. According to the statute of the IAEA, any member has a number of rights and obligations. In fact, all members have to stay on a peaceful path and under the supervision of the agency assist other members and they are entitled to be supported by the agency and have access to the fuel cycle with the help of the agency and its <coughs> members. Some powerful states practice a discriminatory approach against access of MPT members to material equipment and peaceful nuclear technology and by doing so intend to impose a nuclear apartheid. They have derailed Iran's, Iran's nuclear issue from its legal tracks and have politicized the <coughs> atmosphere to impose their wishes through taking advantage of all their potentials. We are concerned that once certain powerful states completely control nuclear energy resources and technology, they will deny access to and thus deepen the divide between powerful countries and the rest of the international community. When that happens, we will be divided into light and dark countries. What needs our particular attention is the fact that peaceful use of nuclear energy without possession of nuclear fuel cycle is an empty proposition. Nuclear power plants can indeed lead to total dependence of countries and peoples if they need to rely for their real fuel on coercive powers which do not refrain from any measure in furtherance of their interests. No popularly elected and responsible government can consider such a situation in the interest of its people. The history of dependence on oil in oil-rich countries under domination is an experiment that no independent country is willing to repeat. Those hegemonic powers who consider scientific and technological progress of independence and free nations as a challenge to their monopoly on these important instruments of power and who do not want to see such achievements in other countries have misrepresented Iran's healthy and fully safeguarded technological endeavors in the nuclear field as pursuit of nuclear weapons. This is nothing but a propaganda ploy. The Islamic Republic of Iran is presenting in good faith its proposal for constructive interaction and a just dialogue. However, if some try to impose their will on the Iranian people through resort to a language of force and threat with Iran, we will reconsider our entire approach to the nuclear issue. We have observed the regulations of the IAEA more than our commitments, yet we have never submitted to illegally imposed pressures, nor will we ever do so. It has been said that they want to pressure Iran into a dialogue. Well, First, the Iran has always been ready for a dialogue based on respect and justice. Secondly, methods based on disrespecting nations have long become ineffective. Those who have used intimidation and sanctions in response to the clear logic of the Iranian nation are in real terms destroying the remaining credibility of the Security Council and the trust of nations for this body, proving once and again how unjust is the function of the Council. When they threaten a great nation such as Iran, which is known throughout history for its scientists, poets, artists and philosophers, and whose culture and civilization is synonymous to purity, submission to God, and seeking justice, how can they ever expect that other nations to have confidence in them? It goes without saying that domineering methods in managing the world has failed. Not only has the era of slavery and colonialism and dominating the world passed, the path to the reviving old empires are blocked too. We have announced that we stand ready for a serious and free debate with the American statesmen to express our transparent views on issues of importance to the world in this very venue. It is proposed here that in order to have a constructive dialogue and a new free debate be organized within the General Assembly. <coughs> In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the Iranian nation and the majority of the world's nations and governments are against the current discriminatory management of the world. The inhumane nature of this management has put it at a dead end and requires a major overhaul. Reforming the world's affairs and bringing about tranquility and prosperity requires the participation of all pure thoughts and the divine and humane management. Thank you, Iran. And let's give the brief uh, to Iraq.
Angela Gates, distinguished chair. First of all, we are glad to thank the United Nations that provide us this meeting. We know that the United Nations has many responsibilities and its undertaking mission is not easy to not demote. So we are pleased to be here and to be a part of this meeting. We know that the aim of this meeting is a controversial issue and we hope to depart from this meeting in peaceful solutions. As you know that Iraq is an important part of Middle East and it includes many different ethnic identities like other Middle Eastern countries. So this situation sometimes caused problematic issues among ethnic groups. Therefore, we really worked hard to establish our new government and leave the difficult election period. Iraq always aims to be a powerful state in the Middle East. However, Iraqi people suffered to achieve this aim in history. Many civil people died because of terror and war in Iraq territories. It indicates that Iraq society lived painful experiences, such as Iran-Iraq War, Gulf War, and U.S.-Iraq War. Especially in Iran-Iraq Iran War lasted for eight years. It was the longest war of the 20th century. After these wars, Iraq experienced, experienced social, economic, and political aggravations. Therefore, Iraq society really knows the negative effects of wars and terror. Although Iraq lived these painful experiences, we finally achieved to establish the new government of Iraq. With this new process, Iraq aims at peaceful relations in both domestic and international affairs. Of course, those new initiatives passed long and hard period. We tried to establish our new government within 10 months. The most forcible of administ administrative process was to balance of political voices and ideas between different ethnic groups. Nowadays, conspicuous subject for all world countries is increasing the nuclear capabilities. As an Iraqi government, we cannot stand in a passive position. On the other hand, we must protect our international balance, which was uh, provided after long and hand painful experiences of Iraqi people, because we got peaceful relations with our neighbors and U.S. after a long process. So we are in favor of maintaining our international policies with balancing peaceful approaches, and we want to emphasize that our priority is to provide our domestic affairs. If we turn to the subject of this meeting, we want to believe that the aim of the countries which have nuclear capabilities is peaceful content. Iran has importance of being one of our neighbors, so Iran's use of these nuclear capabilities affect Iraq directly. But we know that sharing historical backgrounds with Iran, for this reason, Iran may not endanger or territorial integrity or other countries and we think that Iran's claims about nuclear trade is only exaggeration <coughs> of its abilities in order to survive its regime. As we mentioned above, we don't want to see insecure situation in the Middle East. Therefore, the other nations' approach to this subject is significant for us. Although we try to look at this situation in an optimistic way, we have doubts and concerns because of perspectives of other countries. So we beg from other countries and institutions to change their perspectives. Thank you. Thank you. Turkey. Honorable Secre Secretary General, Excellent Excellency, distinguished members of the council, I would like to begin by thanking you for convening this emergency meeting, which provides yet another opportunity to reflect the activities of the Security General and on Iran's nuclear program. I am here today with my colleagues on behalf of Turkey to discuss this issue. First, we would like to emphasize that we strongly reject the idea of nuclear pro proliferation, not just for Iran, but for every country in the region, especially those who have signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. That being said, we strongly oppose any hardline actions the United States and or Israel might consider taking against Iran. Moreover, we would like to emphasize that the IAEA has no hard evidence that Iran is seeking nuclear weapons, and Iran has certain rights under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty to pursue a civilian nuclear program. And a possible war between Iran and U.S. and or Israel would deeply harm the stability of the region. Additionally, we would like to state that although we are committed to the collective effort that may be necessary to solve this issue, we also have a national interest in developing and maintaining economic relations with our neighbor, 
and we will consider our, de our domestic interests as we consider any multilateral actions. In this light, we would also like to address the issue of the economic sanctions passed in the United Nations Resolution 1929. We disagree with the current, current sanctions against Iran because we believe they hurt the civilian population, cripple Iran's economy, and the economies of the country which have economic relations with Iran. And most importantly, we believe that there are more effective means of diplomacy that can be used to persuade Iran to cooperate more fully with the international nuclear nonproliferation efforts. The Tehran Declaration was an important opportunity to provide a confidence for diplomacy, and Turkey is ready for any further diplomatic uh, diplomacy necessary to solve this problem. On the other hand, we would like to remind that historically, Turkey has been an ally of both the United States and Israel. Uh, Turkey was one of the first countries that acknowledged Israel as a state in 1949. However, we are deeply concerned that the policy of the United States and Israel towards Iran causes instability in the region. Essentially, we think that both the United Nations and the United States should shift their focus from a stick-only policy and focus their energy on constructing a more rational course of action. In this point, we want to emphasize that Turkey's concerns about Iran's nuclear programs are still valid. There are serious questions about this issue. Iran needs to be more transparent and should be eager to cooperate with the IAEA. We recommend that Iran should accept the additional protocol to pr prove that they have no intentions to produce nuclear weapons. Ultimately, in alignment with our rejection of the economic sanctions that currently inhibit Iran, we propose a treaty that would require Iran to show a more active commitment to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in exchange for ending the economic sanctions imposed by the United Nations Resolution 1929. Thank you. Thank you. Syria? Okay. It's your turn. Speak to you all. I hope this will be a historic moment, a moment that we start changing the future of the region. We are deeply concerned about possible actions that will be taken against Iran by both the United States and Israel. There is more than one way in dealing with crisis. You can either resort to dialogue or you can resort to force. History teaches us that force does not solve conflicts. The use of force does not solve problems, but it creates bigger problems. Iran is not a small country. Iran is a big and strategic country which controls a good chunk of world oil, waterways, and it's a country which has a culture and history. So when a 60, 70 years old state, Israel threatens Iran, we can clearly say that Iran, Israel is playing with fire. If attacking Iran's nuclear facilities considered to be an option, it will be wise to consider the fact that Iran is not Iraq in the 1980s with one nuclear reactor that was bombed by the Israelis Ozarak. Iran has dozen, dozens of facilities spread all over the country. Attacking them will actually mean annihilation of a nation. You have to destroy Iran to destroy its nuclear program. This is not viable and this is not acceptable. This will have ramifications for all countries in the region. This will mean the beginning of a new world war. So we are totally against that. On the other hand, we don't believe America or Israel will attack Iran militarily, although they threaten a lot, because they know the outcome and ramifications of attacking Iran militarily. Iran is a strong country with strong army, and attacking Iran is not a joke. This could mean the spread of violence throughout Middle East and beyond. The lesson from resorting to use of force, the invasion of Iraq, is still very vivid in our minds. We can see the results of invasion. We can see the democracy and prosperity that West and particularly America is talking about. Civilians are being killed every day in Iraq. There is no security, no prosperity, no progress, no democracy. Iraq has not been able to form a government now for more than seven months. So where is the democracy? Before we had one Saddam, we now maybe have 200 Saddams in Iraq. This is not the democracy we want. This is not the Middle East we want. This is not the type of prosperity 
stability and security we want. We are also totally against imposing sanctions. When an embargo is imposed to a country, poor people get affected first. Healthcare system, welfare system, and everything that keeps a nation together get hit by sanctions. Then everybody becomes your enemy, and they become closer to the government, to the regime. So it has a it has actually a backfiring impact. As in the case of Iraqi sanctions, they directly hit the people, not the regime itself. Sanctions imposed to Iraq killed over one million Iraqi babies and poor people. But the regime was there for 10, 15 years after the sanctions. They couldn't actually topple down the regime in Iraq through sanctions, and that's why they resorted to use of force. Therefore, considering sanctions as a solution for convincing Iran is not feasible. Iran is almost 100% self-sufficient. They can manufacture anything, including military weapons. Whatever they cannot import from other countries, now they can manufacture in Iran. Implementation of sanctions to Iran, therefore, will blemish any peaceful attempts that we are trying to find. Establishment of permanent peace in the region cannot be attached to only Iran and its nuclear programs. This will only undermine the real threat. The hostile, of na hostile nature of Israeli and their way of solving conflicts like occupation of our territory, other Arab and Muslim territory, murders in Gaza, raid to flotilla are only few examples out of dozens. Tell us about negative in indication towards setting up a permanent peace. With all these facts in mind, particularly Israel's ins insistence on not signing the Non-Proliferation Treaty, Israel's resistance on international, pro international pressure to open its nuclear facilities, particularly the one in Demona in Negev Desert, to international inspections, adding the fact that we are leaked by Israeli nuclear agent Mordechai Vanunu, who was later arrested and jailed by Israeli, the leaks he gave to a newspaper about the massive nuclear arsenal that Israel has, all these are ringing alarm bells that Israel has nuclear weapons. And as you all know, it's world, world's worst kept secret. As a conclusion, we are a signatory country to the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and we have advocated the creation of nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East since 2003. Syria is against weapons possessed by any country. We believe in the peaceful use of such technology. So we support Iran's right in having a peaceful nuclear program. The same way as we support any country's right to have peaceful nuclear program. But this does not mean that we accept any country to have nuclear weapons. And we have chosen peace as our strategic choice long, long time ago. 1991 Madrid conference and the ongoing peace process can be considered as a clear indication, a signal for this. Because of this reason, our position in solving conflicts has not changed particularly for this topic. We believe civilized international relations must be built on openness and dialogue rather than isolation and aggression. Our work is setting up genuine security and stability in the Middle East through our dialogue, through our ties, investments, helping people know each other and invest in one another's country. This is how you create stability, by creating better opportunities for the people, better economy, better education, better healthcare system and such. This is the security and prosperity that we are cherishing in the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you. Saudi Arabia. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, your majesties, highnesses, excellencies, peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with you. I'm talking on the behalf of custodian of the two holy mosques, King, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz al Saud, in the presence of this gathering of international leaders and representatives of General Assembly. Firstly, we would like to state that we are deeply concerned about weapons of mass destruction due to their disastrous effects on humankind. They create a major threat against the national security and stability of the Middle East and the world as a whole. Therefore, we adhere strictly to the 
Treaty of Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Treaty of uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation. We support the rights of all countries of peaceful use of nuclear energy, including the countries that have not yet attempted to acquire such a power. Our desire of a zone free of weapons of mass destruction is eminent, especially in the Middle East and Gulf region. Iran's lack of cooperation with International Atomic Ener Energy Agency and Iran's lack of transpar transparency about its nuclear ambitions has caused, caused an augmentation in our suspicions. These suspicions concern us greatly due to the possible outcomes, such as increased armament and weapons of mass destruction that will lead to regional instability. Another issue linked with proliferation is the case of Israel. We, we restate our desire of purifying the region of any weapons of mass destruction. We observe that there is double standards applied to the issue of Israel. Since is Israel is not a member of the International Atomic en Energy Agency, they cannot be subject to any monitoring by the international organizations. This has reduced the effects of nuclear non-proliferation treaty, and we highly suspect that one, the world is not taking the necessary measures in the issue of Israel. This fact can be shown as one of the reasons that Iran refuses to cooperate with the International Atomic Energy Agency. In addition, Iran justifies its nuclear program by showing Israel's nuclear attack against Iran, which resulted in an increase in the, desire, in the desire of nuclear power among the other Arab states. We must apply the necessary sanctions, which will cause Israel to abandon its nuclear ambitions. This will also increase the reliability of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty. Our last, our, our last point is related to Israel's occup occupation of Palestinian lands. Israel's cruel attitude against the Palestinian civilians and Israel's bombings of Lebanon has increased tensions, providing an atmosphere suitable to extremism and terrorism. The situation has supported Iran's ambition of nuclear program. Therefore, Israel should immediately withdraw from the Palestinian territory and recognize the rights, their rights. In a less conflictive environment, we believe that the Middle Eastern countries will refrain from pursuing their nuclear ambitions or at least continue under the supervision of International Atomic Energy Agency. Our, our, desire is, our desire is to see the issue solved under the frame of international law and dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Egypt. Thank you, Honorable Chair and distinguished members of the international community. Today, we gathered here to address a very serious matter of the Middle Eastern region. However, by having global scale consequences, Iranian nuclear issue must be a great concern for all of the international society. Egypt is sharing a great concern with the international society about the potential proliferation of nuclear weapons in the region and about the development of nuclear weapons by Iran and declaring that we are ready to work with all parts who are interested in protecting the stable and the secure environment of the Middle East. We are, re we are reaffirming the Egypt position in support of Iran's right to pursue nuclear energy by saying that all signatories of the non-proliferation treaty are entitled to maintain nuclear energy programs with civilian applications. However, the Egyptian delegation disapproves Iran's delay in informing IAEA about the construction of its uranium enrichment facilities, in which international community disappointed to learn revelations about Natanz and Arak facilities in August 2002. It was the clear indication of secret intentions of the Iran to develop nuclear weapons, and thus a violation of both spirit and the letter of the Article 2 of the NPT. We, as the Egyptian delegation, cannot discard the unclear intentions of the Iranian regime, since the Iranian nuclear program is posing a great threat to our region in 2010. In order to overcome this problem, from the beginning, Egypt pursued an active diplomacy that aims freeing Middle East from nuclear weapons, and at a later stage, from all VMDs. In 1966, Egypt energized its diplomatic campaign against nuclear proliferation in the Middle East, especially 
within the context of United Nations and preferred the diplomatic approach to nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament since the mid-1960s. Our country participated actively in the NPT negotiations and subjects its nuclear facilities to the IAEA safeguard system through signing NPT in 1968 and ratifying it in 1981. In April 1990, our President Mubarak developed Egypt's diplomatic efforts and launched his initiative for establishing a VMD free zone in the Middle East. And Egypt takes part in Track 2 diplomacy forums and leads the Arab League efforts aimed at establishing and drafting an agreement on VMD free zone in the Middle East. Between 2007 and 2009, we expressed our concerns with the statements that escalations between Iran and the West over Tehran's nuclear program are posing a threat to security in the Middle East and the Gulf region. My fellow delegates, we have enough conflict and instability in our region. We do have economic problems, social problems, and constant terrorist actions of some proxy groups all over the region. And there is still Palestinian conflict going on as a threat to stability of the whole region. In that sense, we are insisting of the stabilization of the Middle East region through peaceful means and international cooperation. We are not accepting a further problem which is not contributing the welfare and the stability of our region, but the creation of hostile environment for the parties in the region. And nuclear proliferation as general, the Iranian actions as particular, are one of the urgent matters that UN Security Council should be able to address its possible solutions today and forthcoming sessions. Therefore, Egyptian delegation is reaffirming Egypt's support for every country's right to obtain nuclear power for peaceful purposes, according to the principles of NPT, as we recently rejected the use of force potential, potential solution to Iran's nuclear program in April 2010 nuclear security summit in Washington, D.C. An Egyptian delegation is emphasizing that the international community will find diplomacy more appropriate than sanctions or military action, since we do not think that more section, sanctions are the right way to deal with Iran. Therefore, Egyptian delegation is calling Iran to acknowledge and cooperate with the international community's demands regarding its nuclear program. We are urging Iran to show transparency over the nature of its nuclear program. And as it stated in the charter of this United Nations, our countries pledge to work for the promotion of economic and social advancement of all peoples. I believe in these sessions, all members of the international community have enough will to impose its policies that will contribute to the great aim of the United Nations which is providing worldwide peace and security for all of us, its people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's turn to the European Union. Honorable Secretary General and Honorable Delegates, we are gathered here today in order to discuss the security of Middle East, specifically Iran's nuclear program. As the European Union, we are concerned and also find threatening the nuclear program of Iran, yet we do not find military action against Iran adequate. We are and always have been pro-diplomatic solutions and believe that United Nations sanctions has good effect on Iran. Thus, Security Council has made clear that all measures against Iran are proportionate and reversible. We as European Union do not deny the right of Iran to pursue a nuclear program, but Iran does not comply to the responsibilities they have as a voluntary signatory of MPT, which creates an untrust towards Iran in international community. As long as Iran does not comply to International Atomic Energy Agency and does not act transparent on this issue specifically, then as European Union, we can question whether Iran is pursuing nuclear power for peaceful aims or not. In 2003, the undisclosed activities of Iranian authorities raised serious doubts about the Iranian nuclear program and the unwillingness of compliance to 
IAEA rules as EU in 2005, 2006 and in May 2008, we presented far-reaching proposals which would help Iran to develop a modern civil nuclear power program. Regrettably, Iran could not meet IAEA's requests and provide assurance that Iran's nuclear program is for peaceful purposes. As European Union, we do not turn a blind eye towards Israel's nuclear program. We regularly lobby Israel about the importance of signing NPT, but our efforts are abolished due to Israel's concerns regarding the developing nuclear programs of other countries in the region. Iran's acquisition of nuclear power will lead to other countries in the region to follow Iran, which will finally lead to a high instability in the region resulting on damage on Middle East peace process. As the European Union, we are completely unified in the thought of a vision of Middle East free of arsenals. Our requisition from Iran is suspension of uranium enrichment, addressing unanswered questions and abidance by the additional protocol of MPT. As a reward of cooperation, Iran will receive wide-ranging package of incentives, including full political and technological support for a peaceful nuclear program. First of all, Iran has to rebuild trust, show good faith and willingness. Thus, Iran has failed to explain why they are rushing to enrich uranium when they have no nuclear power stations which could use Iranian nuclear fuel. A blind eye cannot be, a blind eye cannot be turned towards Iran's nuclear program. For as much as we will risk future where prevention of nuclear proliferation is undermined and weapons of mass destruction more available and ready for the use of terrorist networks and rogue states. As European Union, our main concern is peace and stability and in order to preserve these, we repeatedly state our full support in order to find a negotiated solution. With my best regards, thank you. Thank you. Russian Federation. The Honorable Chair and the Honorable Delegates, uh, we are gathered, gathered here in a very important issue that has the potential of uh, affecting the whole world. Mm -hmm. And if uh, misjudged, uh, uh, has a far-reaching consequences. We know that you might have question marks in your heads regarding today's issue and thus supplying this nuclear technology and nuclear fuel to our era. We have our own reasons to do so, but these can be concluded as economic interests and positive uh, politic relations in the region and with Iran. The first uh, thing we need to clarify is that we do not support Iran's non-compliance with uh, IAEA safeguard agreements and also need to clarify we would not support Iran having nuclear military power. But moreover, they cannot be prevented from the right of having nuclear energy technology as they are also member of MPT. And we would like to add that there is no solid proof regarding they do have nuclear military power. So they do not deserve such sanctions, such negative sanctions and uh, actions. If that is the case, we are also ready for more accurate and positive sanctions and ready to change our point of view if there is uh, a proof is uh, supported. But for the time being, this, their nuclear ambition seems to be far from being aggressive and just. As they are also part of the we, uh, we have seen misjudgments against nations before, but we require more feasible proofs and facts before judging <coughs> us and Iran today. Here. Although they violated several voluntary safeguard agreements and requirements, it is yet not possible to provide aggression in their program. Our attendance and support in a recent NATO meeting regarding the shield defense against mass destruction missiles shows our point of view in such case. We are against. Having nuclear energy will be a leverage for the Iran economy and situation in there and therefore a step for the Middle East too. Preventing this from the, them against the human rights and having uh, even aggressive sanctions and actions would violate human rights. Provoking and even attacking Iran's nuclear reactors have a far-reaching negative conclusions, provoking the neighbors, provoking any who oppose. And this might uh, conclude in World War III. Moreover, Iran is not a nation to underestimate and offend with baseless accusations. Not yet attacked, but enforced negative sanctions, 
crippling Iran's economy and therefore Iran in total. This is not the way how to keep peace and stability in the region. War would, war would only lead to more suffering in the region. Now we ask you, the region have not yet suffered enough in the purpose of best nation demands and actions. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Iran has obligations and have to comply with MPT and ease our minds about the issue and IAA safeguard agreements in order to have support of the whole world. In conclusion, no nation should be prevented from achieving their birth rights in the peaceful manner and therefore achieving nuclear technology. We are ready to support and already did. If the world peace is kept and we are against any aggressive manner where Iran have to work more in convincing outside minds of their peaceful purposes. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, Jordan. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for providing us with the opportunity to be here. First of all, nuclear is a matter of energy. Nuclear technology works can be applied in almost any field. Uranium can replace with oil, electric centrals, and industrial materials. The increasing interest in the region in nuclear power is because of high prices. Countries who don't have oil are now looking for other options to generate energy. We also believe that the regional drive is fueled by economic necessity. However, having a nuclear program for peaceful purposes is not a problem, but if we have more than you need, it can cause really crucial danger for people. As we know, today we are here to discuss Iran's nuclear program issue. Iran's nuclear program has become the subject of contention with the Western world due to suspicions that Iran could divert the civilian nuclear technology to a weapons program. Even if Iran declared that its nuclear, its nuclear program for use for peaceful purposes, but Iran tries to enrich their nuclear power their nuclear power. Since Iran signed non-proliferation treaty, uh, Iran has to obey not to enrich their nuclear power. The reasons that Iran give us for providing their nuclear power is not persuasive, because Iran has got nuclear works more than it needs to pro produce energy. Therefore, Iran is suspicious about nuclear power. Iran can use the surplus of nuclear energy to produce nuclear weapons. In that case, we are not support any kind of nuclear power. The reason why we do not want nuclear power in this territory is because of security structures and economical consequences. In, the, in any Iran's war case, this can cause the Third World War. Due to the fact that Iran has huge power in the military, and nuclear power is very destructive. Moreover, if there is any nuclear war in the Middle East, it affects us accordingly. The main problem is immigration. Jordan is a develop developing country, and our natural resources are very limited. Thus, huge amounts of immigration into our country will lead us into economic crisis. As a result, we have really limited national resources. We have just potassium and uranium. We must use our uranium as a nuclear energy program in order to handle with our economical problems. We are always supporter of peacekeeping in the Middle East, and countries which have same opinion with us, they can use nuclear power. Nuclear power is for all, nuclear, nuclear weapon for now. We are just against for all the things which destroy the pieces in the Middle East and especially which country abuse nuclear energy. I thank you for all for your dedication of this cause and for giving me the opportunity to speak with, to, with you today. Thank you. Thank you for explanations and second part will be held after five minutes break. Distinguished delegates, 
Now we are opening up the resolution part for taking your and getting your advice and um, giving your opinion to me and my other delegates and my other colleagues, uh, my other um, ministers and excellencies. Um, okay, I want to get your resolution, resolutionary thing and um, okay, let's start with USA and with your resolution to Iranians with new program and what's your advice and what have to be uh, what has to be to uh, follow in the direction of NPT program uh, as we mentioned uh, for in our speech Iran has to mention its nuclear program as a peaceful purposes and clearly define its aims uh, in addition to this uh, we must we of course have the account of uh, bilateral relations with Iran. However, uh, that, that must be in terms of stability, cooperation, not coercion. That's our resolution for our speech. So Iran must clearly indicate its ple uh, peaceful purposes for the nuclear program related to IAEA. And relations must be held in a compatible and cooperative way with a peaceful applications. Um, is there a comment for United States applications and advisory form? Is there a comment? Comment? No? Okay. I'm passing to Syria's resolution. He stated that Israel's have an, um, some negative attitudes and an aggressive manner and it's no certain evidence on the nuclear program of Iran and Israel had certainly nuclear weapons, he said. No negative sanctions over Iran will, uh, would be continued um, by sanctions through using sanctions. And what about this solution? At first, uh, thank you, Madam Secretary General, thank for you. giving me to the opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, Israel has annexed in violation of security council orders a large part of our territory, the Golan Heights. We are making it very clear that we are interested in a peace uh, settlement with Israel, which will involve, as it should, the withdrawal of Israeli troops from occupied territories. So far, Israel has been, the flat, uh, has been flatly refusing any negotiations. In fact, the only debate that's going on now is whether it's the United States that's pressuring <coughs> Israel or Israel's pressuring the United States to prevent negotiations on the Golan Heights. <coughs> and, in fact, on the occupied territories altogether. It's a contentious issue because the U.S. government and the Israeli government are blocking a very broad international consensus, which has almost universal support. Even the majority of Americans, and which has been on the table for about 30 years, blocked by the U.S. and Israel. With this representing an example of clear hostile approach of Israel to the regional conflicts. The, dis the destabilization of our region is stemming from the approaches of United States and Israel both. So, if stability and peace is our ultimate goal, such aggressive stance should not be tolerated in the region. So, Iran should not be tolerated with its aggressive manner. Okay, um, is there any comment? Is there any additional opinion? Okay. Uh, we have made our intentions very clear that Syrian stance towards non-proliferation treaty has always been positive. In fact, we do, be we do believe that non-proliferation treaty is extremely significant for both regional and global peace and security. However, we also believe that there are a lot of flaws with the way it's being implemented. And Israel is a very good example for that apart from India and Pakistan. That's why there is always an NCT and the worry whether the arsenal or nu of nu nuclear weapons misused or abused. 
So that's why the world has to be very strict in implementing non-proliferation treaty, particularly to the countries with hostile history, such as Israel. Since its establishment, uh, it has been occupying lands of other countries, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan. When you have uh, such a history, Arabs and Muslims have a right to be worried of uh, Israel possessing such weapons. And they were staged in previous wars between Arabs and Israel, when Israel was defeated in 1973. They were that close resorting to the use of a nuclear weapon. So the possibility is always there, and our warnings are genuine. Our fear is genuine that uh, when Israel feels cor cornered, it will resort to the use of nuclear weapons. This is a real threat to peace and stability in the Middle East. We need a better system and stricter way of implementing the non-proliferation. We have set out uh, the standards. We have to set out rules that is fair for everybody, then the punishment should be very severe for countries who violate those rules. But at the moment, there are double standards. Therefore, when we know that nobody has the right to have nuclear weapons, then uh, we will be ha very happy to comply. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Here is our proposal. Mm -hmm. Currently, nuclear weapons possess states like Israel and America is considering nuclear weapons as a deterrent. But again, history teaches us that the only deterrence is actually thinking properly, properly and having a proper mind. This is the only deterrence. Because what happens so far? When one country has a nuclear weapon, all other countries will attempt to have nuclear weapons. They need a deterrent as well. When Israel is the only country that has nuclear weapon, this is not being a deterrent at all. This is actually a motive for other countries to attempt to acquire nuclear weapons. So it is not a deterrent. It is actually a stimulus for having a nuclear weapon by other countries. Why should we as Arabs and Muslims trust that Israel will not abuse nuclear weapons and we have no right to have nuclear weapons? That's why the only solution is that nobody should have nuclear weapons. Thus, before tackling the situation in Iran, proliferators like Israel and the United States should get rid of their nuclear arsenals. Israel has hundreds of weapons and Iran be, is being located and put under terrible sanctions because of suspicion. There is not one proof now that Iran has a military nuclear program. Not one single proof. There isn't. Only on the basis of suspicion, they are imposing sanctions on Iran. For the case of Israel, there are proof that they have nuclear warheads and they do the, not sign the nuclear non-proliferation treaty and nobody is doing anything. That's why we feel very bitter, angry, disappointed in a way that the world powers, particularly, are what is considered as civilized West, have been dealing with this part of the world. There are obvious double standards, which have been largely behind Israel's aggressive actions, and their insistence on the occupation of the Arab lands, because they feel they can do whatever they want, nobody imposes anything on them, there is no one single United Nations resolution against Israel that has been implemented. They don't listen to UN. They don't listen to United Nations Security Council. They don't listen to anybody. This attitude has to change in dealing with our fragile regional problems. Apart from that, true solutions to the conflicts go through adoption of comprehensive dialogues. Israel lands appropriation, their stance towards non-proliferation treaty, murders in international six and such, are creating deeper problems. This approach cannot be tolerated in such, in such a fragile environment. Therefore, peace can be Guinea uh, only if there is a Guinea will to make peace. We wish to see a just, <coughs> comprehensive peace achieved by implementing Security Council Resolutions 242, 338, and Arab Peace in Initiative for that matter. Syria was ready to resume peace talks from the point where they had stopped through the Turkish med med mediator, if it found in Israel a committed partner to such terms of reference. We want to see a permanent peace that returns to land and its rights to the rightful owners. Thank you. Okay, Turkey, we have a response. Thank you, Syria, for your comments and statements, and thank you, Secretary General. Uh, Turkey would like to establish the, <coughs> the stance of 
support from Syria. <coughs> Turkey is also against imposing sanctions on Iran because it will deteriorate the infrastructure and services. It will deteriorate the infrastructure and services of Iran, and it will have a backfire on Turkey's economic stance as well. However, we also believe that if Iran should be transparent, then Israel should also be transparent. Israel's insistence on not signing the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty causes suspicion that <clears throat> they have nuclear weapons. This is the truth of the matter. Although we do not accuse Israel of having nuclear weapons, it is pretty clear. We support Iran in having the right to have a peaceful nuclear program, and we also agree that they should not pursue nuclear weapons. We promote openness and dialogue, not isolation, as Syria stated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Iran. Uh, thank you, Mad Madam Secretary General, for giving me the opportunity to talk you to talk to you in the name of God. Uh, as it is aforementioned, Islamic Republic of Iran is a member of IAEA and is committed to the NPT. All our nuclear activities are transparent, peaceful, and under watchful eyes of IAEA inspectors. However, there are some objections to our legally recognized rights and governments, which are abused nuclear technology for non-peaceful ends, including production of nuclear bombs, and even have a record of using them against humanity, object to these rights. We believe that nuclear weapons are a fire against humanity. And in response to uh, concerns or uh, accusations about the unwillingness to cooperate with international community, Iran welcomes dialogue with the West on equal basis and mutual respect. The aim in this regard should be interaction and cooperation, not animosity with Iran and challenging Iranians' legal rights. This, the discriminatory approach regarding the NPT that focuses on the obligations of state parties and disregards their rights under the treaty should be discontinued. Therefore, all threats and pressures on Iran should be avoided completely. In addition, in order to have the same transparent common basis in our dialogue, we would like to, we would like to the West to clarify its stance regarding Israeli's nuclear weapons. It is not necessary to mention that the Zionist regime of Israel is not a member of the NPT. Initiation and continuation of negotiations with other countries will be carried out in the context of Iran's interaction with the agency on a equal basis and mutual respects. And about the glorious Iran, the Tehran Declaration was a hugely con constructive step in confidence buildings, building efforts, which was made possible through the admirable good will by the governments of Brazil and Turkey along with the cooperation of the Iranian government. Although the declaration received inappropriate reactions by some and was followed by an unlawful resolution, it is still valid. And uh, US intention is nothing but to make this deprivation of Iran's inalienable right to enrichment a technology final and internal. And that the US is completely silent on Israel's nuclear enrichment and weapons program. And again, I wanted to emphasize that the Zionist regime of Israel is not a member of the NPT. The committee should be also asked to investigate as to how contrary to NPT, material, technology, and equipment for nuclear weapons were transferred to the Zionist regime and to propose the practical measures for the establishment of a nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East. I, also, I, would, also, uh, I would also like to announce that uh, those states who have shown hostility toward, towards the Iranian nation for about last for last years offended and accuses our people who have contributed to the history and civilization of the world, and I advise them to learn from history and their recent actions. Thank you. Okay, USA. Uh, thank you, Honorable Judge, Honorable Secretary General, to my uh, I want to answer the Iranian accusations for U.S. Uh, on the March 26, uh, in 2008, uh, Iran denounces the Security Council resolution as politically motivated and illegal because the Secu Security Council had never found Iran's enrichment to be a threat to world peace under the Article 39 of the UN Charter and therefore not binding on Iran. 
Iran denounces the transformation of what had been voluntary measures such as suspension of enrichment into mandatory measures under the resolutions. Iran complains of the uh, hypocrisy of the great powers accusing Iran of, of violating UN Security Council resolutions when they themselves are in gross violation of their obligations under Article 1, 4, and 6 of the NPT to move towards universal disarmament and not aid other countries such as Israel in acquiring nuclear weapons. I, uh, we really uh, suspicious about Iran's uh, peaceful nuclear purposes after this, uh, the, uh, after this declaration, and we just ma we uh, we also just wonder how they can respond the Security Council resolutions in terms of nuclear weaponry. Thank you. Syria points out that there is a double standard and has come to implementation of sanctions are in fact for every side. Uh, Could you please? Here with not Iran's right to process the peaceful civilian nuclear program. But with that right comes responsibility and Iran needs to res uh, restore trust with the international community. Their continued silence on possible weaponization act activities combined with the revelation of secret enrichment sites and aggressive rhetoric does uh, little to restore, restore trust in their intentions, but merely as to our concerns on their program. Uh, EU efforts in 2006 secured a generous package of incentives include assistance in developing a civil nuclear program and scientific and economic cooperation. These offers are still on the table and Iranian cooperation with the international community is the best way of opening the uh, country up for access to technological advances exploiting new skills and enjoying prosperity. Also, the EU full supports the vision of, the, uh, of a Middle East totally free of nuclear arsenals. The EU regularly lobbies Israel about the importance of signing up to the NPT. But such efforts are undermined by Israel's concern that hostile regional powers are developing their own such program. This doesn't mean we should ignore other proliferation threats. If Iran acquires nuclear weapon technology, there is a strong possibility that other states in the region would follow and the Middle East with several nuclear weapon states would lead to high instability, precarious energy security. Thank you. Okay, we are Thank you, Madam Secretary General. Uh, our comments on this issue is Iran should not be isolated and pushed away by the rest of the world regarding economic embargoes and negative sanctions where their business is their own together with IAEA. Imposed sanctions are irrele irrelevant due to, due to the fact that they are baseless. Israel and US should give up their aggressive and negative position and everything should be concluded in peaceful manner. Iran needs to comply with IAEA, IAEA terms and safeguards more and clarify their peaceful intentions. Thank you. Okay. Um, what's your opinion, Eja? Thank you. Uh, firstly, I would like to raise our resolution. As we have stated before, Egypt has been against nuclear proliferation in the Middle East, whether it is perpetrated by Arab or non-Arab states. In the Iranian case, since Iran is a signatory state to the NPT, and we acknowledge that the fact that it has right to have nuclear power, but just only for peaceful purposes. Um, however, it is hard to be sure about the peaceful intentions about Iranian regime's enrichment program. Also, in addition to that, we are, as an Egyptian delegation, opposed all the double standards of US and non-peaceful international solutions to the Iranian nuclear program. So, we are calling an absolute diplomatic resolution to the international conflict over Iranian's nuclear program. And we believe that Iran must uphold its obligations according to International Atomic Energy Agency and Non-Proliferation Treaty. Okay, thank you. What is your resolution, Jordan? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay, so there you go. Thank you.
United States, the North, uh, North, besides the use of these discussions, uh, this situation uh, decreases efficient, efficiency of MPC territory. Uh, so, so the United States put pressure on, on Israel to cooperate with the International Atomic Energy Agency. And in addition to this, United, United States ignores Israel's expansionist and extremist, <coughs> ex extremist policies and uh, Israel's uh, cruel, uh, treatment, uh, uh, cruel treatment against civilian, uh, Palestinian civilians. And this situation increased extremism and terrorism in the region. Uh, and in addition to this, this situation increases uh, interest in nuclear weapons. Therefore, the United States put pressure on Israel to recognize uh, Palestinian people's uh, civilian rights and, and is, uh, Israel's giving up uh, expansionist policies in the Middle Eastern region. Iran's, Iran say that it is, uh, it is nuclear program is peaceful, but Iran's, Iran's uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, remove doubts about its nuclear program why it, by agreeing with the International Atomic Energy Agency and we expect from Iran to prove its nuclear programs to peaceful and Iran Iran to, in Iran uh, increased influence in terms in the Middle Eastern uh, neighbors uh, in ter uh, Iran uh, in terms internal affairs of uh, it is neighbors to increase its influence in the region, and this situation increases instability in the Middle Eastern region. Therefore, in addition to uh, Iran, uses uh, Shia groups in Middle Eastern regions to increase instability and conflicts. Therefore, we expect from Iran to give up it is these policies. Okay, thank you. So if I'm not mistaken, um, you stated on that because of the conflicts in the region, in the Middle East, <coughs> and the aggressiveness of Israel-Palestine issue, which influences Iranian foreign policies towards Middle East countries, USA uh, have to put pressure on that issue to resolve it. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. right. Okay. Is there a comment on Saudi Arabia's resolution? Okay, then, United States. Human rights is one of the most significant issues for us to take into account. However, in addition to the Pakistan issue, uh, I also mentioned, Iran has mentioned that as a religious principle, they take nuclear weaponry into account as haram, is prohibited. Uh, one of course, uh, we of course respect any of religious and we are against the divide the world in terms of uh, any classification for humanity. However, I would also like to emphasize that we take very seriously the comprehensive, uh, comprehensive Iran sanctions accountability and divestment act provisions regarding human rights concerns in Iran. Earlier this, uh, this fall, we designated eight senior Iranian officials for human rights abuses, and we are working with Treasury on other potential designations. One of the best ways in which we uh, and others can support the cause of universal human rights in Iran, and uh, the brave people who defend them, is to hold accountable people who deny them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I want to open up the resolution of the European Union that um, on the continuation of the previous sanctions and embargoes on the equipment of military basement in Iran and Iranian capacity, military capacity. Is there a command on that resolution that, okay. These sanctions does not limit the so social life, mm -hmm. thus can be reversed at any time. Mm -hmm. 
As a subject of matter, these sanctions concern nuclear weapon equipment development and concerning the situation of Iran and unwillingness to cooperate, sanctions seem to be the best option to convince Iran non-proliferation nuclear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Turkey? Uh, before Turkey? Okay, I want to go and discuss. No, you can continue. Okay, in October, uh, two thousand countries in the light of the general approach defined by the European Council, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom, launched a diplomatic effort aimed at resolving the issue through negotiations. Mm -hmm. the, they were joined in 2004 by the EU High Representative, uh, offering support of the whole EU. In 2005 and in June 2006, again in, in May 2008, they represent far-reaching proposal for the uh, Iranian authorities which would help Iran to develop a modern civil nuclear power program, least meeting international concern about its peaceful nature. The proposal offers Iran broad uh, cooperation in the technological and economic, economic file as well as in political and security files. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Turkey, you have something? Thank you, Madam Secretary General. Uh, we, have, we would like to emphasize that we are strongly disagree with the sanctions uh, imposed on Iran because uh, the sanctions will not uh, stop with Iran's arrangement policy. Uh, we believe that. Uh, as other countries emphasize, uh, Iran uh, has 19% uh, self-sufficient country, and uh, this is uh, enrichment policy is not only a political and economical issue for Iran. The nuclear program became a national pride in Iran. That uh, Iran will not stop. Uh, this means that Iran will not stop because of the sanctions. However, a uh, sanction uh, deeply harmed the. Uh, civilian uh, civilian population instead of the revolutionary guards. Uh, for this reason, uh, we are, we are disagree with the uh, sanctions, continuing of the sanctions. And uh, actually, there are, there were uh, there were there is something uh, more uh, rational and, and more effective ways to stop the Iran's nuclear ambitions. About uh, there we in the uh, at the beginning of the. the 2010, uh, which Iran and Brazil, uh, Turkey signed the the swap deal, the Tehran declaration. Uh, this was a, a way to uh, um, there was a there was a way to level up the uh, confidence and uh, confidence to for diplomacy between uh, Iran and other other United States, United Nations countries. Uh, as you will uh, you will state, uh, we have another. Uh, Resolution about this issue, and you uh, may uh, suppose, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to uh, respond. To, we we have to respond to the United States about the human rights. Uh, you know, uh, United States uh, emphasized the human rights, but because, but uh, we are focusing on nuclear weapons, not human rights in this issue. Uh, actually, uh, as the Federation. And as, as, uh, Syria emphasized that uh, sanctions violating human rights uh, because they harm deeply harm the uh, civilian people in the Iran. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we want to get your rational solution that may be taken by international community, um, and it could be wise to get your opinion in order to follow a rational choice of action. Could you please explain it in a very specific and explicit way that what can be done in that region as rational? Okay, uh, we have seen that uh, majority of the countries uh, supporting diplomacy uh, instead of the course of action, uh, especially uh, Jordan and Syria emphasize that a possible uh, course of action may cause a third world war uh, about this region. And uh, we are we are also uh, disagree with the uh, course of action. We, uh, especially uh, as Russia Federation and Syria said, we are uh, disagree with the sanction also. Actually, uh, however, uh, we have we are also uh, believe we believe that there is uh, serious suspicions about new Iran's nuclear uh, ambitions. Iran should be more transparent and uh, be eager to cooperate with the IAEA. 
if they if Iran have no intentions about this issue, there is nothing wrong to signing additional protocol. Uh, in this point, uh, we uh, propose a resolution, a treaty. Uh, we propose a treaty that uh, would require Iran to show more active commitment to nuclear non proficient treaty in exchange for ending the economic sanction imposed by the United Nations Resolution uh, 1929. In response to uh, about concerns uh, concern about the additional protocol and the uh, more transparency, uh, in 2003, uh, we agreed to cooperate with IAEA to sign and implement additional protocol as voluntary confidence building measure and to suspend our enrichment and reprocessing activities during the course of negotiations as long as two EU3, uh, France, Germany and UK agreed to recognize our nuclear rights. However, in 2006, uh, 35 members of Board of Governors of IAEA voted to report safeguards of non-competence to the UN Security Council. Therefore, we suspended our voluntary implementation of additional protocol and all other voluntary and non-legally binding cooperation with IAEA beyond what is required by its safeguards agreement. There is no legal basis for our referral to the UN Security Council since IAEA has not proven proven that previously undeclared activities had a relationship to a weapons program and that all nuclear material in Iran had been counted for and had not been diverted to military purposes. Thank you, Iran. Okay, Israel. Excuse me. Israel. Uh, as a response to what has been said so far, I would like to start by stating that Israel has said it prefers to resolve the issue through diplomatic means, but has not taken military op operation off the table. Concerning MPT, we should start by stating that signing MPT is not enough. Parties should obey the, its rules, which Iran fails to do, as did, as did some other Arab countries in the Middle East. And signing MPT would mean Arab countries not signing the MPT since it would meant recognition of Israel. We highly doubt if other Middle Eastern countries would be a part of MPT if Israel did sign it at that time. Uh, we should also remind other countries' nuclear programs, be it secret or open, which also are con uh, reasons for Israel's not signing the MPT. We should again also remind delegates that Israel have never accepted that it has nuclear weapons. It's also highly interesting why some Arab countries and Iran continues to divert attention from nuclear, uh, Iran's nuclear program to Palestinian problem. We will not go any further on this issue and respond to them, as it's not our reason for gathering here today. Now, as a solution, uh, Iran should sign and ratify the additional protocol and therefore allow free IAEA inspections, inspection on its soil. Uh, as another solution, as was proposed before and rejected by Iran, it could be that a nuclear fuel bank could be established so to supply countries with nuclear energy as they right stemming from NPT. Thank you. Okay, thank you. USA. Without human rights, we cannot live cooperatively. But now we expect from Turkey to explain that uh, the deal calls for Iran to ship 2,640 tons of low energy to Turkey, where it would be stored in check. In exchange, after one year, Iran would have the right to receive about uh, 265 pounds of material enriched to 12 persons from Russia and France. Mm -hmm. okay, Turkey? You have, yes, you have. Mm -hmm. uh, Turkey uh, admits, yes, that the nuclear swap has occurred, but Turkey has good faith to believe that Iran is using its nuclear energy for the Tehran Research Center and not for nuclear purposes. Okay, Israel. Uh, on this matter, Israel would like to take attention to a very important point concerning Iran's intentions toward nuclear development, and hopefully this would count as uh, proof to our claims. Recently, uh, an Iranian foreign diplomat said Iran is working toward developing a nuclear bomb with the help of scientists from North Korea and other countries worldwide. 
Haidari, the name of the uh, diplomat, has been working for the Iranian Foreign Ministry Office in Tehran's airport, airport during this time. He said uh, the North Korean experts helped Iran develop nuclear bombs capability and increase the range of Iran's ballistic missiles. Iran's claim, therefore, uh, for uh, nuclear program as for uh, peaceful means is a fatigue, as Haidari noted. If uh, this should not be accepted as a proof uh, for Iran's intentions, then uh, the subject should be open to international search and discussion supported by the UN. Thank you. Thank you. And also, uh, we want to give example about uh, stability, uh, instability in the Middle East. Concerning regional instability that Arab countries are talking about the stability in the Middle East, Israel and USA, uh, according to Syria, Israel and USA cause instability in the Middle East. Uh, however, we do not uh, support any terrorist organization in the Middle East. Uh, these terrorist organizations causes uh, instability in the Middle East. And uh, the Sir Syrian president uh, Bashar Assad has bound with Hamas, Hezbollah, and PKK is the way to develop stability in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Egypt? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a Middle East nuclear weapon free zone will be advantages for all countries in the region, including Israel and Iran. No country will have the insecurity of worrying about a possible nuclear war in the region, which will be destructive for all concerned. What we need today is two parallel tracks, with the participation of all the relevant players. One should move towards the achievement of Israeli-Palestinian and Israeli-Arab comprehensive peace, and the other should move simultaneously towards the achievement of a nuclear weapons free and weapons of mass destruction free zone in the Middle East. We as the Egyptian delegation urging Israel that success in dealing with Iran will depend to a large extent on how successfully we deal with the establishment of nuclear free zone in the Middle East. Therefore, the choice is simple. Either Israel disarms or the rest of the world, Arab world goes nuclear. And mutual trust and confidence are particularly important to create the conditions in which nuclear weapon free zone and the eventually weapons of mass destruction free zone are likely to be uh, established. And lastly, we will be able, able to reach our resolution during this se session in following minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Does your opinion comment, Turkey? Uh, we have a question for Israel. Okay. Uh, we were wondering at what point, clearly, almost every country here is concerned about your own nuclear programs and the fact that you, Israel, uh, the fact that you haven't signed uh, the NPT, and we are wondering at what point you would sign the NTP, and if this would be perhaps a means to get rid of the stick-only policy that the United States and Israel have been uh, pursuing or have been implementing towards Iran. Uh, Turkey wants to answer some points. Okay. Uh, if the, uh, United, Israel wanted to, uh, Iran should uh, sign the additional protocol, but uh, if, if uh, Iran uh, will sign the additional protocol, Iran will get some benefits from this uh, uh, treaty. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that Iran and the United States should get both the stickling policy on Iran. Okay, thank you. First Israel and second the US. Well, actually, we just responded that, <coughs> stating that the signing the NPT would have meant that Arab countries not signing the NPT since it would be a recognition of Israel. So, as I said, we highly doubt if other Middle Eastern countries, Arab Middle Eastern <coughs> countries, would be a part of MPT if Israel did sign it at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, I believe we already answered that question. Okay. USA. And the second question, Federation. First, for nuclear concerns and nuclear weaponry, I can say that we can talk at the moment that capabilities turn into influence. And those who have declared a change in their foreign policy should translate their words into sincere actions and seize the unique opportunity by choosing dialogue rather than repeating their inefficient, uncivilized, corrective formats and language doctrines. Okay, Russian Federation. 
Uh, signing the treaty is only a protocol, but uh, Israel may enable uh, the, the control and inspection of IAEA or any other uh, agencies into the region uh, regarding this issue if they reg uh, require uh, Iran to comply with this too. If they don't convince the rest of the world about the threat mm -hmm. that Israel may cause, then they have no right to be uh, uh, questioned, uh, question Iran's uh, position in this matter. Okay. Israel. Israel? Actually, the state of Israel is located within the hostile states for our existence today. And of course, because of this uh, best situation for our country, actually the, the state of Israel is one of the pursuing the peace in the region because the uh, secure our country. Uh, because of this, I think the uh, not uh, actually the taking military action uh, towards in Arab states today, but also uh, our states try to uh, defend themselves. Uh, we know that actually Iran helped found and organi organize and train the organization and provides uh, the terrorist organization and actually the, st the state of Israel uh, directly concerns about the, uh, any nuclear capability, maybe a hand of the any terrorist organization that the cause uh, any instability of the region. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Madam. Threats of nuclear weapons and other instruments of war by some powers have taken the place of respect for the rights of nations and the maintenance and promotion of peace and tranquility. For some powers, claims of promotion of human rights and democracy can only last as long as they can be used as instruments of pressure and intimidation against other nations. But when it comes to the interest of rightful claimants, Concepts such as democracy, the right of self-determination of nations, respect for the rights and obligations of peoples, international law and justice have no place or value. This is blatantly manifested in the way the elected government of the Palestinian people is treated as well as, well as in the support extended to the Zionist regime. It does not matter if people are murdered in Palestine, turned into refugees, captured, imprisoned or besieged. These do not violate human rights. Thank you. Okay. Is there an opinion? Okay. USA. Before IAEA, Yukoya Amano concluded that the nation's weapons related activity apparently continued beyond 2004. IAEA report confirmed that Iran has enriched small quantity of uranium to 12 percentage but made no assessment of how close it might be to produce producing a nuclear weapon. Thank you. Thank you. Also, we had something uh, October 2003 and May 2005. Iran enters talk with the uh, E3 on its nuclear program while implementing some confidence building measures. The IAEA details breaches of Iran's safeguards agreement. Iran suspends enrichment and accepts a package of enhanced safeguards, including the additional pl protocol. However, Iran does not answer all questions about certain activities that suggest it's carried out nuclear weapons related work in the past. Thank you. Thank you. It's right by saying we are uh, positioned in a, a hostile territory. That's why we don't ratify the MPT. By saying this, they mean, do they mean that they have a protection of nuclear power? Uh, and uh, furthermore, we, that's what we are trying to prevent uh, by MPT, uh, that a nuclear weaponized world. So if everyone who uh, sees themselves in a hostile territory, that uh, they don't uh, ratify the MPT and they pursue nuclear uh, passion, then uh, the world would be lost with uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah, right. Thank you, Chair. The Egyptian uh, delegation would like to recall that any sanction of uh, military actions by the use of force will trigger the potential unrest in the region. The international community should not be unfair to the Iranian regime and its national sovereignty. 
However, Israel, as the country of this region, should also be a member of MPT and start negotiations with IEA, Board of Government, by monitoring its facilities. Because Israel is also an obstacle for uh, free of uh, WMD MD, uh, to the Middle East region. In that point, uh, further sanctions are not the ways of contribution, peace and security, but hardening Iran to sit on the table negotiations with the P5 plus one members. Uh, therefore, we sincerely support uh, upcoming diplomatic negotiations in Istanbul with the appreciated efforts of Turkey. Thank you. Thank you. As we are the advocator of international community, we have to open up a draft resolution and we have to end up that resolution. In the circle of, first of all, the stipulations um, and the subtitles of the sanction are required because um, from the view that getting from Turkey is, for us, is so optimistic. If you um, have, if you declare your sanctions and uh, diminish its negative effects, that uh, it is respectively um, normalize our diplomatic relations with Iran. They stated on that issue. However, um, it is not that much easier to diminish the sanctions of the our charter and article sanctions towards. Um, Therefore, we have to add some rational things um, on the stipulations of the not in just for the sanctions, but um, under the cover of our charter, as you have mentioned before, and all of you are uh, aware of the concern that Iranian nuclear program, um, even if there is no recent and um, certain evidence on the Iran, uh, we have some concerns about it and we are together, uh, have to, we have to uh, overcome this issue by not unilaterally or bilaterally. We have to take a caution, a precaution by together with all of us. And I need your um, sanctions, it's, it will not be under the cover of sanctions, namely, but we have to need some radical and rational things. So uh, the previous sanctions should be regarded and should be continued. <coughs> the sanctions are not for individual purposes. They are not uh, in the name of danger for civilian purposes. They're just um, established for military options for Iranian nuclear energy and nuclear program. Uh, providing nuclear facilities to Iranian military cooperative um, formulation and formation, the companies will not be accepted for those of reason. Is there a, any solution for that sanctions? Document. Okay, the previous sanctions will be held and in the next session uh, we have to prevail, not the realities, we have to over it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>